All right, we're Grand Finals. First game of Grand Finals on Obsidian between Failthouse and Capricious for the August 2015 1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333. I'm still with Floris the 14th. And yes, we're I'm still here. About to finish this up. Welcome to the 2014. Uh, I mean, 15. Um, you mean 16. I mean 16. We've been doing this for August years August. now. <laughs> it's like, you're right, actually. This is like the second year? No, third year. Well, I mean,. There were two years of constant tournaments, and then 2016 has been a bit less constant. But yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd pretty much describe it that way. Yeah. Yes, August 2016. Hooray! So yeah, failed us versus Capricious, fighting for first place. So it's hitting a bit big of a map. map Let's too. see what happens. Yeah. I'm really not sure. I feel like Felthas has the advantage. I feel like Capricious does their absolute best on larger maps. And then Failthos does okay on large terrain maps, and Capricious or Kshatri does best on maps with a fair amount of hills and a lot of room to be tricky. But then Capricious also has tricks with scythes. And yeah, this map man. is really good for Cloaky. Yes. yes, it is. Oh, well, I'm not sure though. You can get a long way with spamming defenders on this map. Well, maybe that's true for every map. Yeah, Ugh, stupid <laughs> broken. If I would be capricious, I would be tired. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh man, that's gonna be tough. Felthas at least got a break. <laughs> yeah, he, he got to watch for half an hour. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Capricious has been playing hard. I mean, those were close games, especially for the five hours uh, straight now. Holy crap! You're right. Capricious has actually not had a break this entire time. Wow. That is saying something. Oh, well, no, no, there was a break. There was a half hour or 20 minute break between the two, between the Swiss and the the bracket stage. Oh, by the way, I like like your intro uh, animation. Thanks. With the rockets and the planets. <laughs> yeah, Dimefriend made that. Very nice of him. Ah. Yeah, it's really cool for them. I'm glad they did well, that done. because it, it looks great and then I can just play it before every single where the videos are supposed to cut and it's easier to figure out where the videos are supposed to cut. Ah. Because I just look for that and it's like, okay, that's the start. And it also looks really cool. <laughs> All right, so capricious. Oops. Jumpers. Cookiebot. Oh yeah, failed thoughts in the jump bot factory. Guess they want to see if they can do what Kshatriya couldn't. Show Kshatriya how it's up. done. <laughs> All right, so we. I was just seeing pretty normal stuff. Yeah, neither of the players decided to start at the cluster of three, but at the cluster of two in favor of a closer to center start position. Well, yeah, but it's not too hard to get to the back and then just take it. It's a bit le it's a bit harder to defend no, it. No, it, it's a significant... It's, it's not that close. It takes True. time and you cannot react with units from your factory if you are attacked. And the problem is that usually if you don't have radar on the hill, the time you see the units come over, you cannot react with your factory. That's a fair point. As you can, usually can on most maps. When you see the attack coming, you can adjust with your factory, set exit points. So, yeah, he's going to hit it, this place. No, you can't. You have to anticipate or actively scout for it. Hmm. Well, it looks like Capricious is just going for defense instead. Feltos, on the other hand, is going to get some defense, but a bit late. Thankfully for them, Capricious has nothing coming in. But yeah, you're right. They're both kind of gambling on it. Capricious less so, but still. And Capricious feels threatened by that possibility because he's making a turret before he's making matches. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Where Failthus does not feel threatened. Their turret is on Q, but it's after the metal extractors. Yeah. I mean, the thing with this map is that it's totally bot pathable, but the hills are so slow that I think a lot of people don't bother. They try to go down the main path. I don't know. I see a lot of people uh, use those hills. Oh yeah, they use them, but it's like the main straight path seems to be the common thing that people oh, try well. to do at first. Again, that uh, lightning gun. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, against against Pyros, what else would you do? It's great. I don't know. Particle uh, cannon. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe missile launcher. But lightning guns do the Zeus thing. Be a commander Zeus. Why not? Yeah, I haven't seen a single battle commander. Does it even exist? 
Does it still exist? The bad in the commander? Game. No. There's a guardian commander that no one ever plays. I mean, the much... core uh, model, uh, the, the core. No, model. that one's not there anymore. The guardian commander is more or less the replacement, but basically it's. There's economy, recon. I think there's still the siege commander, the long range one, and then there's the guardian commander, which is either a new model or the arm commander model. I don't think there's the core commander model anymore. Okay. If either way, no one uses that. I have never seen it used. Econ and recon are basically the only choices with the occasional siege commander for someone who's actually doing a commander based strategy that involves the range. Oh. Yeah, Battlecom just has nothing for it. There's nothing that really has an advantage because Econ Com has the massive increase in build power. You get two build power every level up. And the Recon Com is jumping. Although apparently the plan is. Or the idea, I don't know if it's the plan, but an idea was to just have the commanders all be kind of generic. And then the commanders can be built with a module. So that you can build them from a generic chassis into one of the mm. four modules. Or just have the parts that define the commander modules as separate modules you can upgrade to. But I don't think that's the plan. It was just sort of an idea thrown around at one point. I'm pretty sure for the foreseeable future, it's just going to be commanders as they are. And thus, Econ and Recon will most likely be the most likely to use because they do different things. Like they have major qualitative differences. Yeah. Not just more health. Which is basically all the Battlecom has. Or the Guardian Commander. Both teams. About equal. Yeah, but Feltas has a major advantage here with these two pyros going around the back. Capricious, they don't have radar at the back. Oh, you know, that's Feltas. They he, don't. They have radar at the back. They do see what's going on. They do see the pyros yeah, he coming. Know, he knows exactly. He knows that those two pyros are coming. Actually, Capricious already was on point. They had three lotuses already. Like, every single angle is protected by two lotuses. Yeah, even the back uh, base. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Capricious should be fine. And failed us. Failed us is the first one to start uh, expanding to the next cluster. Or it's not even a cluster, to the next series of maxes. After the first three. Mm hmm. And Capricious. Okay, B both to the same side, but in a different uh, location. Oh boy. I think that failed us. Oh, they better not meet up, because Capricious has a better force to deal with this. The Warriors is going to beat the Pyro. Yeah, oh, most actually, definitely. Oh no, he actually has, no, not necessarily. Uh, a the jack and a couple of uh, Mortis moderators. Moderators. Yeah, all I just realized the constable would actually slow down the warriors, so it's not necessarily a win. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the downside of uh, building your energy in the middle of the map. Capricious is okay. Uh, he loses though. his pyros. No. Careful with your commander, dude. Careful. Oh, wow. Now, the commander's fine. The placeholder ended up messing itself up. Oh, well, yeah, indeed. But the check and jump out of a uh, black hole. I should suppose it didn't jump out of the black hole sooner. Yeah, it takes attention. True. You have to look up the J key on your keyboard, etc. <laughs> See, I have a slight advantage. In my case, it's on the H key. Actually, it's on the W key now. It was the H key, <laughs> but then I messed around with it. It's actually on W now. Because I want to make okay. a grid key, I want to make a grid keys more or less set up, so that all the state commands and everything, like U J M and right of that, and then the other, the first six columns, are all normal commands. So I'm pretty sure jump is on W, and then I have Q for metal extractors or something like that, and then H is load. Anyway, that aside. This looks like, once again, more artillery. Actually, this looks like, I was about to say, we've seen this before. Sigero did this, actually. Yeah, he All did. the artillery. More artillery and push forward with the defenders. I mean, against that many mod raiders, that doesn't seem uh, like a bad idea. There's already fire warper, so it doesn't really work. Yeah. That's a bit of a problem. I haven't seen a single sniper this tournament yet. You're right! I mean, Spectre still exists. There's still a thing. You can still do them, but yeah, we're seeing scythes, we're seeing hammers, we're seeing... I guess... not Actually, no ticks, come to think of it, either. But yeah, we're seeing scythes and hammers a lot more than usual, but no Spectres. Oh, not that there's bad. Spyro on the right side. He's going to run into a warrior. 
Yeah, this is the thing I was talking about before between the Constable and the Pyro, but it looks like the Constable and the Pyro are not together. So that warrior's dead. I mean, not the warrior, the Pyro's dead, the Pyro's uh, dead, one around. Oh, what? No, the... What? The Sith is uh, locked, uh, it cannot move through the tree or something, it's... Pathing is... Oh, crap. Uh, it's the same, like, same thing with uh, Sprank's game. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, sad. That, that could have killed, or at least... Yeah, do something to the Firewalker. It would have helped. Although the Pyro is dead over the east side of the map, so... Capricious is going to be able to deal with this. On the other hand, the Warrior burned to death, so there's really no offensive power. Everything's going to come down to well-placed defenses between the two workers. And whoever sends reinforcements first. And at the center of the map, there's just all the placeholders and everything. Slowly but surely getting rid of the hammers of the Light Vehicle Factory. What is that going to build? Build us. Ah, he's taking more territory now. He has more than uh, Capricious. A little bit. Capricious also does not have much of an army. It's 7k against 2.7k. That doesn't help either. Although, a bunch of sides coming in. I guess they could come in and chop up the Firewalkers, but... I Jack's wonder where did all that metal go then? He has 1k less in turrets. Either excess huh. or economy. Yeah. Or this Aegis here that costs 525 metal. Oh yeah, that too. And he has just been bleeding a lot of units to that uh, Firewalker. Yeah. And not really rebuilding. This Capricious has well, a sniper here. It's a thing. It, it really works. That's okay, a lot so... of jacks, by the way. That has a lot Five of jacks. jacks. I don't think a Spectre would help that much here, actually. Are they trying mm. to sh knock the bullets out of the sky? What are they going shooting the floor for? But yeah, it no looks like idea. we're going to be seeing Wolverines. To get rid of the Jags. My artillery is bigger than your artillery. I don't like the fact that this is an artillery fight. I mean, Feldas is winning economically very slightly, but yeah, it's like this... No, it's just bleeding out units. <laughs> oh, that's why they're attacking the right side. Yeah. Uh, Especially against this army, it's like you just send. Well, yeah, Spectre would definitely be good. Yeah, that should. That work. would help too. This... I'm just thinking, Glaives at the front, maybe? That wouldn't really do the oh, best job. He's fighting in range of his own turrets. And I'm not speaking of five jacks there. Yeah. Uh, you cannot assault this with the Raiders, that's, that's not going to work. No, I'm just trying to think what else you have to work that would get rid of Mod Raiders and Jax. Can't think of any one thing. I mean, other than going oh. for air. Yeah, we haven't seen air yet this game. It's that would help for against air. the Firewalkers. Actually, it would help a lot against the Jax. Unless you go for Ravens. Don't go for Ravens against Jax, that's a bad idea. Actually, no, it's fine, because Ravens don't dive to bomb anymore. I think Capricious is not keeping track of what's happening t in in the corners of the the map. He's yeah. entirely focused on, on that center uh, fight. Which isn't surprising, especially also the scythe in the bottom of the map, which has kind of gone away, but still. It's not totally surprising. No, and it's now a big sumo. sumo. Yeah. Of course, now that the Aegis has been completely knocked around a bit. I mean, it's well, not knocked around, it's been completely penetrated. Not much can be done here. I think Capricious is going to have to just see yeah, this game. The commander's down, the fusion reactor's going to go down, the factory up front's going to go down. All the sides are if, down. Even if the sumo dies now, it doesn't even matter. No. And that's not even. Oh, that is going to happen. <laughs> One final scythe coming in there. Yeah. Screw you, Sumo. Oh, it's funny how, did, how this uh, assault worked out. It's all close combat units. It is. Scythe versus Jax. It's like, what is this, 0k kingdoms now? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I wouldn't entirely mind, but, you know, it's just... That's new. It's different. Doesn't usually happen. 
Well, at any rate, Veil Thoughts, it looks like they're cleaning up. Capricious does have a fair amount of economy, though, so... A lot of Caretakers. Are they going to go for a rapid air switch, or are they going to just try to push a bunch of Cloakies? Because they need to be building something. Do. I don't know either. I mean, it's a gunship... A massive gunship has, switch. It's, it's made for small fights and little things. No, but just Small hammers. defenses, small energy, small units. Well, it's all jacks and sumos and big stuff. Yeah, and a crow coming in from Felthos. Oh boy. Are we finally going to see a crow that's going to fire its D-gun? I, I don't other... know. I feel like this is the third time. It should be different, but I don't feel like it's going to work out that way. And I know that Capricious is stuck in a rut. Their head is stuck. They're on tilt. So yeah. they might just throw in the towel right here. Like they're just... There's no other reason they'd be going so heavy on hammers. When they have other options they could go for, and they've clearly not remembered all the options they have. Although hammers over to the northeast side of the or northwest side of the map to deal with some stuff. Hey, almost hmm. did some damage. Ow! It's like 500 metal worth of size. That didn't do anything. One more size would have actually killed the caretaker too, and then everything would have died. Oh wow. More hammers. Watch oh yeah! Did you not see the hammers? Yeah, there's I a did. lot of hammers. But versus Pyro, but Feltos has the counter to it and has the economic advantage. And has the crow. It's which, over. The crow is up. I don't know if it's gonna do anything. Here it goes. Resigning in five, <laughs> four. Yeah, once the crow gets spotted, I think it's gonna be game. I just feel like Capricious could have gone for a Dante or something on top of this. Like, they had 30 metal per second. It would have been a gamble, but at this point, everything is. Just push forward with the Strider-class unit, and then just go. And yeah, hope for don't the best. rely on those small units. It doesn't work. And it doesn't work. Yeah? It's spotted. Yeah. Is it going to do a thing? It's able to attack. Oh, wow. That has been a successful uh, tournament. Well, no D-Gun yet, though. No, but still, it's, it's good enough. It's good enough. I'm a happy man. Yeah, <laughs> it did a thing. All right, well, that's game one to Failthus. Pretty much entirely, because Failthus just actually changed themselves up. They adapted what was going on. Yeah, GG. All right. Both players excess quite a lot too. Four hundred. They were within four hundred metal of each other for excess. Wow. Sheesh. All right. Yeah, so. there was no answer to the fire warrior. It just kept shooting and training metal, and yeah, then it got replaced much. by Jax and the sumo, and then it was over. Yeah, I'm just really surprised that there wasn't anything in response. I mean, <laughs> yeah, more small artillery units. What? That didn't work. And no, they're no, quite mean, expensive. Anything in response that wasn't just small artillery units, like... Yeah. I don't know. Even ticks would have been okay against the jacks, come to think of it. Although the defenses would have been a problem, but... It's like, there's a lot of stuff that could have been done. Rocco's could have been done. But it's a big map, isn't it? Ticks would have been done. Ooh, what's the map? Oh, Isle of Grief. This should be interesting. This actually isn't that big of a map. It feels somewhat big, but it's not that big of a map. So yeah, we're on the Isle of Grief now, which is, man, this is, this is a pretty good map for everything. Reminds a bit of uh, iced coffee, by the way. Yeah, although it came a bit later, and I liked, I prefer I the design. This is actually like this design is not quite what I was trying to go with iced coffee, but it basically does the same things that iced coffee does, with far fewer of the issues that iced coffee has. Like, it's yeah. a bit bigger, so it doesn't have the cheese issue as much. Although, it does still have some gunship cheese you have to watch for. And it's got... I mean, the path to the back, which in iced coffee is more something that was unintentional. But still, it does mean the rush distance works out okay. I mean, it's still kind of the same idea, just mirrored slightly. But yeah, you're right. It is similar to iced coffee. I just think it does iced coffee better than iced coffee. 
And I was on a made iced coffee. Mm. <laughs> well, good luck. Have fun, everyone. Yep. Well, Capricious is going for Floki. Feltas. I'm guessing Feltas is going to just go for a Blastwing Rush. Just try to... Oh, no, no. Really? Cloaky bot. Wow. Okay. Of course. It's Capricious. Well, yeah, but I figured... No, Capricious, yeah, but Feltas is going for Cloaky, too. I thought Feltas oh. would go for Gunship Plant. I mean, they're 1-0, and they're on the winner's side. If they just cheese out a win, they win, and the tournament's over. Could have just gone for a Blastwing Rush and just gone, well, whatever. Boom. If they, if they win, five minutes, and it's done. If they lose, eh, whatever. Play another game. If they win that, they win. <laughs> Good to note how Feldas puts his factory on low priority and his commander on high priority. So yeah, he can that's... just build his economy as, uh, as quick as possible. That is a very good choice, and Capricious is not doing that. But yeah, that's that's good practice. Lorder is the main player I've seen do that. And that was the first player I really saw doing that, and that taught me to do that. Like, just by watching it's a, It's really easy. It's a lot easier than managing your economy with the weight command and counting out all the timings of all the units up, up front. Mm -hmm. Instead, you just put low priority on your factory, which has the same effect. Well, sort of. You have to be a bit careful, though, because it's handy most of the time. It's just one of those things where, like, 90% of the time it's good, and the other 10% of the time you have to be very careful, and you're a little out of practice in how careful you have to be in terms of getting the timings just right for the units you need. Yeah. Overall, though, Starcraft, I still think... In that, in that respect, Starcraft is just so so much harder. Yeah, because you always have to be bearing that in mind. Even though 90% of the time it's not a big deal. Whereas in 0k, it's like 90% <laughs> of the time you don't have to think about it. It's just the other 10% of the time is when you, it becomes tricky. Yeah. And you have to actually really be paying attention then. But you only have to pay attention then, so you're not quite in the habit of paying attention as much. So it's kind of weird. Like, on the one hand, it's easier. But on the other hand, if you get lazy, then it's much more exploitable. Like in 0k. In StarCraft, oh, look, you can't get lazy. Oh, juicy constructor. Let's kill it. But no, there is a Sif. <laughs> Capricious with the scythes all the time. I think at this point, anyone who fights Capricious, just scythe screen. As a rule, <laughs> just scythe screen. You know they're going to build scythes. They always build scythes. Every single game is scythes. With pretty much no exceptions. That's what Capricious does. So... I'm a bit surprised there was only one glaive sent down there and not two. One to take the scythe and the other one to just go around and realize, oh crap, there's a scythe, and then run away. Or at least maybe deal some damage. It's like, the scythe screening is a big friggin' deal when you're dealing with Capricious. Anyway. Yeah. But... Uh, and at the same time, Failthoss going for scythes themselves. I mean, might as well. They're clearly powerful. And Capricious going for a Warrior Switch. Interesting. Probably for an Assault, because there aren't a whole yeah, lot of, of Glaives. You can't yeah. really go wrong with Warriors. That's true. In, at, at this stage of the game. Unless I your opponent reads... The strongest unit uh, at the 2 minute mark. Unless your opponent reads it and goes minutes. Rocco's. But even then, you just walk away from the Rocco's. Eh, that's fair. And there's space to move around. Oh, and decide sneaking in, it won't be able to do a huge amount of damage. I think Felthos... Uh, oh, they figured it out. Either that, or they just realized they need to have a glaive somewhere here. Huh? Hmm. <laughs> Look, he's patrolling his, uh, his, his glaives on the left side, Felthos. <laughs> he's paranoid. No, he's returning the favor. Phil does uh, attacking with Scythe himself. What the heck is going on with this reflection? Now, nah, whatever. Alright, so mm. it looks like... That's one... That's a hero Scythe there. Oh, that Scythe. Yeah, no kidding. Glaive's attempting to be heroes too, but not gonna happen. Capricious not letting that happen. I mean, it looks like at this point... Oh, I see what the problem is. Shoot. Alright, it looks like Capricious is going to be just taking all the territory. Certainly got the advantage there. Felthos, sneaky little scythe here. 
Going for the Lotus. Good yeah. call. I mean, that's nothing else to really not block. Not sure about it. Nah, it wasn't really doing anything. It wasn't defending the the metal oh, extractor or the constructor. I think what they were thinking is that if they needed to retreat from another Lotus, they have a room. They have a place to retreat to. And now they just have an entire base they can take. And the hero or... scythe has been spotted and killed. Aww. Because it was a spy. Did you see the gunship? I don't know. Let's see. It did. Okay. Yeah, so, he's already making a chainsaw. But well, it's an expensive piece of... Uh, wow, really? AA. That's a bit overkill. I would have gone for a razor myself. It doesn't even cover his... Uh, any other expansions than his main base. Oh, yeah, that's... I don't know. If he would have moved it a bit to the left or to the right, he could have uh, defended uh, two out of... Uh, I'd have gone to the left. Yeah, then if you cover six mexes. Nine mexes, actually. Or no, uh, I'd say it's probably about seven or eight mexes. It's still really good, though. And rapiers are coming in, so I mean, the chainsaw would be useful. Actually, it's useful either way. It's just razors would also be useful. That's I just don't. I'm curious yeah. why the chainsaw. That's curious to me. And capricious Laziness. with the defense. Just you build it once, and you don't have to think about it anymore. I guess. Anyway, it's done. So. <laughs> Ooh, nice. No, not this time. <laughs> nice defense by Felthas there with the glaives. Very nice in the northwest. And now the rapiers are. How many are done? Two are done. Well, one's done, and the second one is in production. Huh. Yeah. Caprices is up in energy, about equal in metal, more turrets, bigger army. Wow. Where is that 600 metal in army difference? Zeus's? Yeah. Zeus's are 350 each. Yeah, like, but there's... How, why, how does it come that Veldas does not have it? I don't know. He has been slightly ahead in economy. He hasn't really been accessing, or has he? Hmm. Well, building defenses very close to accessing actually a lot of the time. Building defenses, building power. Yeah, he has 900 in store, while Caprices uh, has not. So that's the difference. Okay. 900. Got it. Gotcha. Feltas has a storage. No, but he has a full metal store, thousand. And... Oh yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, he does have a storage. Yeah, over to the right side of the map. Which is about to be broken. Or no, it's not. Two Zeus and one warrior. Might break it. No guarantees. Especially with the rapiers coming in. And that chainsaw is... Not in range! Nope, those Zeus, the Zeus and warriors are on their own. It might it's, clean up a, a couple of things. But they're not going to get rid of the in storage. In the end, it, uh, they will die. Actually, they might get rid of the storage. Hey, they Ooh, actually they do! Feldas is gonna excess slightly! Yeah, then he will lose 250 metal if he kills the store storage. Yeah, that come on, kill the storage, kill the storage. That's the most valuable thing you can kill. There we <laughs> go! Oh El Torero, you've been shot. I don't even know if they're watching right now. I haven't seen El Torero oh, in a while, come to think of it. Caprices is accessing like crazy now. How ironic. Feldas is not accessing. They lost some metal, but they're not accessing. All right, Capricious oh, is on. Luke, there we it's, go. Uh, it's an attack. Where the chainsaw <laughs> isn't. Hey, and the razor is, but the chainsaw isn't. So, yeah, good luck with that. And scythe blocking. Gauss to block yeah, scythes. Yeah. So, we got an anti air turret, which has killed one Banshee of 250 now. I'm going to keep track of uh, the cost it makes. You mean the razor in the southeast? No, the what is it called? The, the chainsaw? Hexel. Chainsaw in the center. It's killed something? Yeah, a banshee. Oh. There were banshees being built? I missed that. Yes. Ah, oh, come on, Capricious, you were doing so well. Well, anyway. Yeah, Capricious was doing pretty well, but now it's just I don't know. Don't fall Switching apart. to vehicles. Hmm, interesting. He plays like me. <laughs> I'm always making random vehicle factories on the on the map too. Yeah, like last game, I just feel like Capricious. I mean, I feel like in this game, Capricious is much more confident. They seem to have a better idea yeah, what they want to do. Yeah, this is more his type of game, I guess. So 
But I still feel like the vehicle factory is kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, and he cannot stop those warriors. Although, no, he can't. Oh, there are Haxels over to the western side of the map. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's really, Feldhaus just has so many things that are really well defended. Whereas Capricious, they haven't rebuilt the southeast yet. They have no workers down there, and everything else is naked. And sides are going to take advantage of that. Because that's what sides do. They take advantage of your nudity. That sounded yeah. much less bad in my head. Like, way oh. less skeevy. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound that creepy. Wow. They put it on Facebook. That's... Quote of the tournament. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, why did I say that? I didn't even know what I was saying. <laughs> it's... I... Hey. So, what, how do you think Feldas can come out of this? Uh, what do you mean, how do you think Feldas can come out of this? Feldas uh, is I mean, winning. Uh, Capricious, uh, no, Capricious, oh, can, Capricious? No, he can't. He, he lose, yeah, he loses his big units now. Yeah, I feel like Capricious just shouldn't have gone for the vehicle factory. I don't really see the point. Like, maybe for Wolverines, or maybe for Slash... No, I mean Slashers. I don't know. What could they have done? Like, I could see a gunship switch working out okay. I could see building a Strider Hub working out okay. I could is even see with all the defenses in this style. Or not? I want to know. I don't think so. I don't see any selections on them. It looks like it's automatic. I mean, it's not bad for thinning out the forces, but... Sheesh. Aw, oh, and of course the size now the size come in for fail thoughts. Yeah, he lost. He lost big time now. Look at all the Zeus that's that are coming in for the second yeah, round. Yeah, that's six hundred metal for nothing. And the chainsaw hasn't even done anything yet. Oh there it goes! There it goes! Chainsaw's actually gonna hit something. No, it might kill the kill a second uh... Maybe. It looks like it's gonna it's yeah, gonna weaken them a bit. Yeah, no, he killed one. So that's 550 metal killed. And 600 metal lost in the factory. Oh, yeah. And another crow! Oh, yes. D-gun! Please let the last game of the match end with a crow D-gun. That would be so fitting. But I think it'll end with a surrender. I think Capricious is just going to throw in the towel once to see that. I mean, they're, <laughs> tired. they're stuck on size. Their head is stuck on size. They have nothing else. There are a lot but of other options. Dark Templar, that's the mantra. Yeah, it's just they have a lot of options. They have factory switches they can switch to. They have other units that, that they could build. They have they have ticks. Ticks would be really handy. Yeah, but most definitely. Can you imagine ticks? Wow, with all the scorches and those uh, LTs. But no. All right. Well, the crow's almost done. My scythe beats your scythe. Oh, okay. And some rebuild with the Conjurer, but... Oh, man. It's just... Like, if that Conjurer hadn't died here, it probably would have made a bit of a difference. And then after that, it probably would have kept Capricious from going completely on tilt. And are they going to go for another factory here? They are! Spider Factory over to the south... Or the center west side of the map. North-ish west side of the map. Are they going for Crab? I mean... I can't think of any other reason you just randomly into Spider Factory. Hmm. Like, unless they're doing a total switch. I don't know, they're going for Recluse. Okay, they're doing more of either a total switch or adding a Spider Factory. But, yeah. D-Gun, D-Gun, D-Gun. I mean, it's been spotted. Chainsaw's doing everything it can. Capricious knows something's there. Now knows that that something is. And that's... And it's D-Gun. It's D-Gun time. There oh, it is! Boy. There it is! The Hooray. Crow D-Gun! Fourth time's the charm! <laughs> <laughs> and thus ends the August 2016 1v1 tournament. Thank you, Parswell, for hosting. Good job, players. Good job, Failtoss, for winning. Good job in second place, Capricious. Kshatri taking fourth place. And Nimor, well done! Taking fourth place. Or Kshatri third yeah, place. Yeah, Nimor. It's our new prodigy. Yeah, the guy I have be never heard anything. Wait, no, that's the entirely wrong verb. Let's try that again. I have never seen Nemo play. I looked at the record, it looked like they're mostly a team game player, and I think they're the one the team game co-op, that was either them or... or... Siguero. 
And yeah, both did they, well. Yeah. They both punched above their weight, as far as I could tell. So I really want to see them more often in 1v1, and hopefully they're in further tournaments, because... Well, in general, that... how much 1v1 is being played? A lot of people that play today just came back for the tournament, uh, I think. That's true, but even then, Nemo does apparently play a decent amount <laughs> of big teams. So they're an active enough player. And... Hmm. Seguero is also... Yeah, like I said, co-op versus bots primarily. I mean, really, for someone who primarily plays co-op versus bots, I mean, clearly that's been good practice. Yeah, he didn't even have to use his... Uh, his uh, loss card, or his free... Uh, how do you call it? The witch? Uh, Felos didn't lose any rounds, I think. Or did oh, he? yeah, you're right. No, Felthos... Well, Felthos lost in the Swiss one. portion. Felthos went 4-1 in the Swiss portion. But he yeah, lost this one... is the first engagement. Yeah, he uh, lost one match. That's it. Yeah. And Capricious was clearly too oh. tired and just... I could tell Capricious was on tilt there. They were just on autopilot. They, had, yeah. they didn't know... I don't know. They just stuck. It's the thing with 0k. It's really easy to go on autopilot and get stuck. I do that all yeah. the time. It's so hard to be adaptable. It really is. But yeah, congratulations to Veldas, Capricious, Cash Shatra, and Nemo, and thank you all of you for playing, and thanks Bruffle <laughs> yeah. for hosting, and thank you Flores for co-commentating, and thanks everyone for watching, yeah. and have a good Yay. night everyone. Good night, and uh, next time, next game, next tournament. <laughs>